So a safe work method statement is required depending on what the people are actually doing. So if a person was working on a switchboard that is energised, well, we'll say has been energised, and the electrician wants to go and work on that uh, switchboard, then they need to um, undertake a safe work method statement to determine firstly what is their activity that they're about to do so they might be going to install circuit breakers or whatever they need to consider well what's my hazard and the hazard is that they could get an electric shock or they could have an arc flash and then they need to consider well what is the control and the control would be i need to isolate supply uh, at that switchboard and that doesn't mean just turning off the main switch because then that switchboard is still alive. So at a house, uh, they would have removed the service fuse and that would be their control device. Uh, if it is live cabling that's running through a building, uh, then if there is work that is going to occur in and around near that cabling, that needs to be incorporated into whatever activity they may be going to do. They may be installing plaster or pipe work or duct work. So they need to consider um, am whatever I'm doing, does that pose a risk? Uh, am I likely to damage this cable? Because a cable that's running through a building by itself uh, does not pose a risk to anybody. It's the interaction that they have with that cable and the materials that they use near that cable um, that ultimately um, are whether the person is at risk or not. So if they're cutting into it with a saw, uh, then yes, a risk of electric shock or explosion. If they set the cable on fire, uh, so because they're using a an oxyacetylene to go and um, braze a copper pipe, for instance, then again, uh, you could get an electric arc flash from that as well. Uh, or even the part about um, we got cables running down through a metal wall and the plasterer is screwing off and screws, puts a screw in through a cable. So, yeah, they do need to consider where the cables are. So depending on who the worker is, they need to look at it and think, do I have an electrical risk? If I have an electrical risk, how am I going to manage that? So what are my controls going to be so I don't create a risk for myself or others?